So your state, um, you're talking about the sanctity of life. Um, your state had one of the highest maternal mortality rates in the country, according to the CDC, up until about 2021. Arkansas is one of the few states that hasn't extended postpartum care for mothers. Um, why don't you want those moms to get care for a full 12 months, as is being offered, instead of just 60 days? Well, I'm going to have to disagree with the premise of your question, saying that I don't want that. I certainly want us to do everything that we can to help uh, uh, during pregnancy and well after uh, a child is born, which is why we have done things like focus on uh, the foster and adoption care. We've put significant funding into our pregnancy crisis centers. We're focusing on things that help our mothers, including bring your kids to work at state government. We've expanded maternity leave for state employees. We included that in our education package. We have taken a number of steps that are very positive in this front, and we're gonna to continue to do that as long as I'm governor. But the states of Mississippi, Wyoming, Montana, South Dakota, they did extend for 12 months rather than the 60 days. So I'm just wondering specifically on that option, why you opted out? We're going to continue to look at options that we feel like best help uh, people here in the state of Arkansas. We've done that in a number of ways, and we're going to continue to do that over the course of hopefully the next seven years while I'm governor of Arkansas. Ever since Republicans got what they've been campaigning on for decades in overturning Roe versus Wade, they've wanted nothing to do with explaining their way out of it. Arkansas Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders does more dodging than answering on this. But when it comes to empty political narratives that aren't backed up by reality, she dives right in. I think it's very simple. Uh, conservatives, they want to be able to make their own decisions and live freely. Democrats want to be able to control and dictate every single thing we do. To me, the, the contrast could not be more clear between the two sides. If you want to make decisions for yourself and for your family about how you will live, how you will educate your kids, how you will run your business, then you should be a conservative Republican. If you want the government to do those things for you, then you should be a liberal Democrat. Governor Sanders knows the truth. But she's politically married to the talking point that Republicans don't want to control every aspect of your life, right before detailing just how much they'd like to control you. The party's only rebuttal to the truth is Democrats want to do what we're doing. But for some reason, once conservatives are out of office, they tend to tell the truth about their objectives, probably because they've been bogged down by the years of lying that they participated in. I, I tell you what we do have a sense of is most Americans do not want women or doctors imprisoned when it comes to the issue of abortion. And when you have state legislators like one in my home state who are advocating for the death penalty for a rape victim who decides not to carry the child, then that is a political loser. So Republicans used to say this is a state issue. Now it got to the states and you got crazy legislators proposing things like the death penalty most Americans, most Americans, you can criticize Roe versus Wade all you want, but most Americans had come to some peace that this is what the law is. So former Congressman Trey Gotti must think that the leader of his party is in lockstep with those crazy legislators, but they're too scared to say so. Do you believe in punishment for abortion, yes or no, as a principle? Uh, the answer is that there has to be some form of punishment. For the woman? Yeah, there has to be some form. This law, this is... The legislature's law, this is your law. The legislature created this in 1849. It's a strong pro-life law. It bans abortion from conception. We're trying to tighten it up. It has good uh, criminal penalties. Um, it does exculpate the mother. Um, this is what we should be strongly defending. And again, I'll, I'll say that um, putting this bill forward um, does signal that the legislature's doubts about its lawfulness. And I don't think that's a good message to send. I think all of us should be standing strong um, to defend this law. Considering how many times we heard Republicans proudly announce that Roe versus Wade has to go, it's curious how quiet and dodgy they are about the crown jewel of their political agenda now. They should be celebrating that guy, Matt Sand of Pro-Life Wisconsin, that was talking there. It's almost like they never gave a damn about their principles. They just needed a culture war topic to keep voters on their side while they actually work for the billionaires and corporations that pay them. But Democrats are focusing on the issue, at least. As we face this crisis, as we are clear-eyed about the harm, let us also understand 
who is responsible? Shall we? The former president handpicked three Supreme Court justices because he intended for them to overturn Roe. He intended for them to take your freedoms. And it is a decision he brags about. Yes, he does. A couple weeks ago, he said that for years, quote, they were trying to get Roe v. Wade terminated, but he said, quote, I did it, and I'm proud to have done it. Proud? Proud? Proud that women across our nation are suffering? Proud that women have been robbed of a fundamental freedom? Proud that doctors could be thrown in prison for caring for their patients? That young women today have fewer rights than their mothers and grandmothers? How dare he 